So, it's been about a week since I released the one week anime battleground game video. And I just want to say thank you all so much for the support on that video. Like, it's literally the fastest growing video that the channel has ever seen. So, thank you all for that. I worked really hard on that video, and I'm glad you all enjoyed it. But you're not here to listen to me glow, right? You, you, you saw the title of the video. You want to see me suffering, right? Right? Hi, I'm Lee Hampson III, but you could just call me Liam. And for those of you that don't know, I am the sole scripter for the new and upcoming Roblox game, Devil Battlegrounds. So, in this series, I'm gonna show you all the challenges that I went through and still have been going through in the development of this game, while also giving you a little bit of insight on my own life. So with that, let's get into it. Now, not everyone has played a Battlegrounds game before, so let me briefly explain. A Battlegrounds game is essentially a fighting game with no real end goal or objective. Besides just making the other player rage quit or start bypassing the Roblox filter so they can like call you racial slurs. You know, it's odd. It's like these games have a magical appeal to them. There's just something so fun about just mercilessly Brushing someone's head in! No, but seriously though, the animation, the particle effects, the sound effects, they all work together and they create something beautiful. But I digress. There were a lot of challenges that I faced just this week alone. So, let's start with a big one. Now if you watched my last video where I made an anime battlegrounds game in one week, you know that at the end of the video, I asked you all for help by joining my community discord server, which you should totally join, link in the description. And many of you did. We got like 200 <laughs> members, it's crazy. And some of you even decided to contribute to the project and make your own things for free on their own will. I, I mean, it's crazy, right? It's like free labor. <laughs> no, but <laughs> seriously though, thank you. Like. Honestly, it, it means so much to me. I'm, I'm not joking. It's really it's crazy, but you know I'd actually like to be able to pay the contributors with you know money Preferably real money and luckily for them There is a great way to fund this game and that's by these YouTube videos is what I would say if YouTube didn't take my monetization away Yeah, so as it turns out I don't really have any form of government issued ID and uh, that means I can't verify my AdSense account and thus no money. Trust me though, I've been trying to get a state ID but the California DMV is slower than, well, any motor vehicle in existence so unfortunately it'll be about a month before the wheels really start to get rolling. <laughs> get it? Get it? Because DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, and the wheel, the wheel is part of the car. <laughs> and while this doesn't concern me that much, I'm not trying to have the hype of this game die out immediately. So it's a problem, but it'll be one that I can hopefully fix. Because don't get me wrong, I'm still trying to push out updates. I work extremely hard on the game, and that is a commitment I've made since I've started working on the project. So don't get me wrong. I've been putting in my part. In fact, this next issue will highlight that in a pretty big way. No! Now, this probably comes as a surprise to no one, but I'd rather be working on the game than like participating in half of my classes. Only because they're like so boring. But the only problem is I don't have my own laptop. And all the school provides are these crusty, musty, dusty Chromebooks. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware Roblox Studio does not run on a Chromebook. So, how did you do it? Well, it's a little complicated. First, because I use Roho for my projects, I'm able to seamlessly work between Roblox and Visual Studio Code. With Visual Studio Code, you have access to Git. And with Git, you can access remote repositories from things like a school Chromebook. So I'm able to access my GitHub repository, which contains all the code for the game. And then I can commit changes, which I can then accept on my computer and just simply publish the Roblox game. Now hold the phone. TeamViewer 
Team Viewer is blocked on like, well, literally anything school related because you know, you just access your PC. They don't, they don't want you to do that. Thankfully, the Team Viewer people made a mobile app. So I pull the changes from my GitHub repository on my phone and then publish it to Roblox. Then I test the game on the Roblox mobile app, all on this tiny screen. And I don't know if you know this, but I don't exactly have 2020 vision. In fact, normally I wear glasses. The only reason I'm not wearing glasses right now is because the light that is right over there reflects into the camera and you can't exactly see my eyes that well. Not that my eyes are the most pretty thing in the world. But at least you now know that I'm dedicated. I'm also hoping that I can fix this issue when my channel gets monetized, but we'll see. But now let's talk about some issues that I actually was able to fix. Devil Battlegrounds is a very special game to me. And because of that, I don't want my Battlegrounds game to be a copy and paste Battlegrounds game. Like, uh... <coughs> <coughs> Jokes aside, I've been wanting to add something fresh to the genre. I, along with some people from my Discord server, which you should totally join, have figured it out. Now, in Battlegrounds games such as Sorcerer's Battlegrounds and The Strongest Battlegrounds, there exists a form of transformation that you can obtain after beating up enough people, known as an awakening. An awakening essentially changes your character's moveset temporarily to these like super overpowered moves. It's kind of like a last stand kind of thing. It's a fun mechanic, but it is definitely weird. In Devil Battlegrounds, I want to have this as well, but I also want there to be like an intermittent layer between the two known as a transformation. For Denji, this means becoming the elusive Chainsaw Man, but there's a catch. Just like in the original Chainsaw Man anime and manga, when Denji loses enough blood, he no longer is able to use his chainsaws. Similarly, in my game, if you lose enough health, which is technically your blood, you know, close enough, then you'll no longer be able to use the chainsaws. Additionally, you will also lose a certain amount of health every second that you use the chainsaw man form. You know, for balancing purposes. Becoming the chainsaw man form also means that your moveset will change to a different one. So you have that moveset, Denji's moveset, and on top of that, another moveset for the awakening where you become the pure chainsaw devil. That's a total of 12 moves. And yes, I know I'm making some pretty large promises here, but these won't be that hard to implement because I made a pretty good foundation for the game. Maybe getting the moves to like mesh together might be a bit of a challenge, but it would make for a very interesting devlog. But I am certainly no miracle worker. So please give me time to make updates to the game. I work as hard and as fast as I can to produce quality, but that still takes time as I am the sole scripter of the game. This additionally means, at least for people in my Discord server, there will be a time for when a new character needs to be added. So you don't really have to bombard me in the suggestions channel about like all these crazy characters. I can hardly get Denji together. I'm trying my hardest here, all right? And another reason that Denji is not finished is because, well, for this last issue, which has been the biggest rework in the game so far, and, well, it's frankly why the title of this video is what it is. Now, this may seem like an exaggeration, but I assure to you, it is not. I know well enough that I don't suck enough at Battlegrounds games to lose this hard in a 1v1. No. The reason I lost this 1v1 is for something that you might not actually think. Bro. Oh. Oh my god, bro. What the? Bro. Cash, 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 actually cash. Bro, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I'm literally blocking. No, 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 uh, he just went through my block! What? No! So, what happened? Well, unfortunately, this is kind of where it gets technical. You see, when I first started working on the game, I was trying to think, what is the best 
hit detection that I can use for the game. And for me, I thought it was gonna be a client hitbox, as it seemed to be the smoothest, probably not the most reliable, but it worked. I mean, all you'd have to do is send a list of the players that are hit to the server, and then the server just processes that hit, right? Well, this does work. Otherwise, the people who've play tested my game would have said that it's utter garbage. So what's the deal then? Well, it's actually a matter of hit reg or hit registration. And it's actually an issue that all online PvP games face with hit reg, and it is lag. In my game, when a player with a higher amount of ping decides to hit you, they see a delayed version of the world compared to that of the server, and especially to that of the receiving end. And this can leave the player really confused, as on their screen, they could be long gone from the hit, but when in reality, on the server, they're not. So what's the solution to this? Well, it's pretty simple actually. We just get the server to do everything. So instead of running all that logic on the client, the client, when they're going to hit someone, just tells the server that they're gonna throw a punch. And then the server does all the hitbox animation stuff. Then that is sent to the receiving end. What this does is it makes the delay the fault of the lagging player and not the player who was hit. And it's that simple, right? Well, not exactly. This means that I also have to rewrite every single move in the game and on top of that things like running and dashing which are partly client-sided have to be reworked and it is a lot of work i'm still working on it now as of recording this video i haven't implemented all the moves back yet but i actually have got running and dashing working and that's took like at least two or three days to fix it's quite confusing and there are a lot of tiny factors that you have to account for and there are probably a bunch that i've missed and will end up as bug reports on my discord server but that's okay because that's my job as a developer for annoying as it is to think you fixed a bug and then someone tells Tells you that that bug is still there even though you swore you fixed it but you actually didn't <sighs> that's just programming and for as much as i hate it i also love it so hopefully i'll be done with that soon enough after i work out all the kinks so i can get back to adding new moves the next move that's in order after the barrage and chainsaw attack is some form of counter interestingly there was also going to be another move added to the game which was a hatchet throw this was going to be a ranged move but i don't think the community nor i really saw this as fitting denji's character and therefore the move has been scrapped i'll probably just have to rethink that one but for now that's really all i have if you'd like to see more devlogs like this one or even perhaps a development live stream then i highly recommend that you like and subscribe to this channel also if you'd like to contribute to the game you can still join the discord at any time link is in the description but besides that i'd like to thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next devlog